in this tutorial we're going to be creating this basket based off of this image and we're going to be using this image as reference inside of Maya. In order to use this image in our Maya project we have to make sure that it's included in our Maya project files. The image needs to go inside our source images folder. Images that you want to bring into Maya, so any sort of reference images or textures that you're going to put inside Maya go into the source images folder here. Whereas images that come out of Maya, like renders or UV layouts, they will save to the images folder. Of course, we want to make sure we set the project. So file, set project, choose the project that we're working with, and that way Maya will know where to look for all of the files, and click set. We're going to use that reference image as an image plane. So we need to choose one of our viewports. I'm going to choose the front viewport. I'll go up here to view, image plane, import image, it's going to automatically know to look inside my source images folder because I've set my project and I'll choose that image of the basket. Click open. Now it's created an image plane with that picture on it facing the front camera. So we can use this as our guide while we're modeling. By default the image plane is created at the origin of the grid so I'm just going to click on it to select it, use my move tool and just move it back so that way my model can be here at the center of the grid and this can be out of the way a little bit. I also want to move this up in the Y so that way the bottom of the basket is resting on the grid line and then I can move it in the X so that way it's more in the middle. Before we begin I'm going to adjust which viewports see which cameras just to make it easier for this video. Now we can begin creating the model. I'm going to start off by creating a polygon primitive cylinder to use as my base. I want to use the smooth preview options, so I'm going to lower my subdivision access to something with less divisions. I'll choose 8, then I'm going to take my cylinder and move it into position so that way it's showing in front of my reference image. Now this reference image is at a different kind of angle. In our front orthographic view, we can see that we're only seeing the front straight on. Whereas this basket, it looks like we're looking a little bit from the top, so we can see that top face a little bit more, as if it's kind of tilted. So we're not going to be able to make this look exactly where the basket's looking. We're just going to use it as a rough guide to get the basic shape. And the reason we pushed our reference image back was because if it was right here in the middle, it would be cutting through our object. So we can start by scaling our object to match the size a little bit better, kind of figuring out how we're going to match it, and then we can go into our component modes and start matching it up. So we'll right click, choose vertex mode, and I'll select these bottom vertices and move them down. I'm going to use my scale tool to make them a little bit smaller, and then I'll select my top vertices and make the next extreme. So I'm making the top extreme and the bottom extreme, and then we're going to fill out the rest. So if I go to object mode, select my object, and hit 3 to check out my smooth preview, we can see it's coming along. Looks like we need a few more divisions here to get the shape right. So I'll hit 1 to go back to regular smoothness, and to add in those divisions I'm going to use my insert edge loop tool. So I'll hold down shift, right click, choose the insert edge loop tool, and now I can click and drag and create an edge loop. Let's try there, and while I'm here I can make another one. I'll hit Q to leave this tool and just go to my select tool, and then I can double click to select these edge rings. I can use my scale tool to scale this out and get more of that volume. I'll do the same thing at the top, double click to get the edge ring, and then you'll notice that when I'm scaling I'm going from the middle so that way I'm scaling uniformly. So we can see here how it's going in the perspective view. If I just scale from the side like this, we can see that in my perspective view, all we did was scale it in one axis. So it gets kind of, it's not really the shape we want, right? So that's why it's good to have the multiple viewports open so you can see what's really going on in the perspective view, even though it might be easier to do the work in a different view. So let's go to object mode. 
I'll hit 3 to check out my smooth preview. Looks like we're getting more of the shape. I can also adjust the components in this preview mode. You just want to make sure you're checking out the regular smoothness because it can get out of hand if you're only working in this mode. You can see here that in this mode it looks like I've just scaled it in and it looks nice, but here it's doing something that we don't really want our model to do. I think that looks pretty good for the outside of the model. Looks like we're getting a, a nice shape. So next let's work on creating the inside of the basket. So to do that, well, I'll hit 1 to go back to regular smoothness, and then I'm going to delete these top faces. So I'll right click, go to face mode, select my top faces. I can use control to deselect anything I don't want, and then I'll hit delete. I'll hit 5 to go back to shaded, and then to create this inside, we're going to go ahead and go to edge mode, double click to get this top edge ring, and we'll extrude that out to create the bottom. So we'll go to shift, right click, extrude edge. I'll use my Z axis to get some depth in there. And then I'll extrude again. Instead of going to shift, right click, extrude, I can hit the G key to perform the action that I just performed over again. So it's going to perform another extrusion. I'll move down in the Z to get the depth. And then we can see that in our front view we can't see what's going on because we're in shaded mode. So we'll come over here and hit 4 to go into wireframe mode. So that way we can see inside our basket. I'll hit R to switch over to my scale tool and leave the extrusion. And then I'll scale this down because we don't we want to make sure it's not uh, protruding outside of our basket. So we'll scale that in, and again we're going to move down to the extreme, and then we'll fill in the rest later. So we'll just move as far down as we want, and then to fill in this hole, we'll make sure we have the edge ring selected, and then go to shift, right click, fill hole. And that's just going to make a face in between all those lines, and fill that in. So next we want to give some shape to the inside of this hole. If we go to object mode and hit 3 and check that out, it's looking pretty good. It's not bad. But we might as well just add a little bit of shape. So I'll do a shift right click, insert edge loop tool, click and drag to choose where I want to put my edge. And now that it's created, I think I'll just use one. I'll hit R to go to my scale tool and scale that back and I can always move it. Alright, that looks good to me. There we go, so now we can see it's looking pretty good. Now there are some rules as to how a model is supposed to be created. We want to make sure that our model is created mostly out of quads and triangles. It's a good idea to try to keep everything a quad, and so a quad is a four-sided face, so just like this. This face, it's got one, two, three, four edges that make it up. And a triangle would be if it had a line through the middle. There would be a triangle made out of three edges. This face in the middle is made up of more than four sides, making it an n-gon. And even though for our purposes we're just rendering out a picture, it's not as big of a problem for us right now. We just want to keep that in mind that we're going to have uh, better looking models if we keep things in quads. We won't have as many strange artifacts. So to adjust this face, I'm going to use my multi-cut tool. I'll go to shift, right click, multi-cut, and this gives me this little knife, and I can click on the vertices and draw out an edge loop. When I'm done clicking, I'll right click to finish that line, and then I'll click on the next vertice to the next one and right click when I'm finished. This creates one, two, three quads. As we can see, now they're all four-sided faces. I'll hit Q to leave the tool. So now let's create this top part. I'm going to show two different ways to do it. First, we'll extrude these top faces. So I'll go to face mode, 
Click on this first face, hold down shift and double click to get the face ring. I'll extrude this up, so shift right click extrude, move it up in the Z because we're getting some depth. And then I want to extrude this new edge ring out, so I'll click on one face, shift, double click to get the edge ring, and you can check it with wireframe mode. I'll extrude that, and move it in the Z to create some depth, and there we go. I'll hit Q to leave my extrusion and then check this out in object mode. Not bad. Another way we can do it is just by inserting edge loop tools to create those new faces. Select that face ring and then extrude that out. We can see that that really gets us basically the same thing. Now that we have the basic shape for it, we can just adjust the edges around, adjust vertices if, in case we uh, want to make any changes to the shape. For instance, this ring of vertices, I think I might move it out a little bit. That looks good. And then this top edge, it might be nice to give this top edge a little bit more to do, so I'll scale it in, and then I'll move it up so it's giving us a little bit more shape. It looks good. Alright, very nice. I think that does it for the basket.